video. The goal of the video is to create a IPsec tunnel between a Cisco and a FortiGate. On the Cisco side, we'll be utilizing the VTI element, which creates a tunnel, a GRE tunnel, and attaches a IPsec profile to that tunnel, as opposed of creating an ACL on an outgoing interface to match interest in traffic to push over a VPN. And on the FortiGate side, we're going to create a single phase two and bring that connection up and then have a view on the policies and the routing required. I want to have a quick overview of the topology so you can take a screenshot, write things down just so you can go along with me. It's already pre-done for us, we're just going to jump in and configure the tunnel elements. Uh, the whole topology itself sits inside an EXI box. Don't need to be too concerned, the configuration is identical to a real world scenario, whether it's virtual or, or not. On one side we have a CSR1000V, which is a cloud-based router from Cisco. Fortigate will be running 5.2.4 and it's the 15-day trial VM platform from Fortinet. And we will be configuring the Cisco first, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start on the Cisco CSR1000V. This is inside the EXI box. I've already gone ahead and configured some of the interfaces. So we're not going to go into too much detail of how that works. All you need to be uh, concerned about at this moment is connectivity to the other side is fine and it's looking healthy. And it's important to confirm that before you dive into any VPN configuration, otherwise you're only going to have to be tearing it down at a later stage to then investigate further. So we're in. This is go. We confirm connectivity and we're happy to get on with things. I'm just going to brush over some of the commands. I'm not going to go into too much depth on what they actually do and mean because this video is going to be try to be as short as possible just to give you some of that guidance and if you're unable to get a VPN up between a, a Cisco and a FortiGate. So first things first, we're just going to go in and configure the policy. I'm just going to just pop some settings in here. And we're going to put the encryption. It's going to be a low encryption because the FortiGate is on a trial and doesn't actually allow me to up the encryption any higher than this. I'm then going to uh, specify what authentication method I'm going to have. In this case, I'm just going to be using the pre-shared key. I'm going to specify the Diffie Hammond group. All of this needs a match on the 40 gate, that's crucial. And then I'm going to put together the IPsec uh, transform set. I'm going to give it a name. In this case, I'm just going to give it trans1. And again, I'm going to specify some encryption. And then I'm going to specify some hashing. Again, this all needs to match on the other side. Okay, if it doesn't match, you will have problems. Now I'm going to specify what sort of mode this tunnel is going to be. Um, in this case, we're going to have a tunnel mode because we want it to actually encapsulate the IPs and have a, when it gets decapsulated the other side and unencrypted, it has IPs to actually root. So tunnels most likely what you would require if you do a site-to-site -site VPN. What I'm going to then is create a crypto IPsec profile. I'm going to give the profile a name. In this case, I'm going to call it test VPN. And then I'm going to actually link the transform set that I've made earlier into this particular profile. Now we've done the IPsec configuration, we need to look about the tunnel. Um, again, this is actually using the VTI element rather than using a um, ACL which attaches to an interface to match in interest in traffic. We're actually going to use a tunnel here. So to create the tunnel, we'll create the tunnel interface. We're going to give it a source. In this case, this source is uh, my local outgoing interface. And destination is going to be the FortiGate at the other end of the link. We're then going to specify what mode. Uh, in this case, we want IPv6. Uh, sorry, we want IPsec, and uh, we're going to be running IP4. And then we need to look about the tunnel protection. So actually applying the IPsec to the tunnel. So we create a profile earlier, we call it test VPN, now we put it in. Okay, so that's the configuration required for the IPsec. I've cleared the screen and I want to bring up the running config so you can have a nice view of it. Here's your policy. We're going to use the pre-shared authentication, Diffie Hammond group, what's the actual pre-shared key, who's our remote peer. We can see that we're going to use the tunnel mode. We've got the transform set called trans1, which is referenced down here. And then we also, within the trans1 set, we've created a profile for that to actually sit under called test VPN. And then ultimately, test VPN is applied underneath the tunnel interface where we specified it to be a IPv6 VPN. And we specified the source, so our outgoing interface, and the destination interface. 
What's also important is creating a static route. So we know on the other side, we actually want to get to the 172.16.0.0 slash 24 subnet. So what we need to do is put some IP routing there and route that down the tunnel. Now let's jump over to the FortiGate and do the configuration there. Okay, so now we're over on the FortiGate. Let's log into this. We're going to start on the VPN section. Now depending on what version of FortiGate you have, you may not have the tunnel wizard, you may have the tunnel wizard. But uh, ultimately, it's going to create a custom template anyway. I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to give it the word test. Pretty straightforward, some of this. Um, static IP. Obviously, this is going to be the IP of the Cisco. It's going to ask us what interface it's out of. We refer back to the diagram. We know it's out interface 4. NAT traversal. So I want to turn this off because there is no device doing that between here and the other end of that Ethernet link. Pre-shared key. I'm going to show you at the moment just to make sure I've typed it in correctly. Test 1, 2, 3. Ike version 1. Now you notice here, again, like I said, it has to be a low encryption because I don't have anything as support. We're going to give the main mode. And we're going to keep the phase 2 element all zeros. Okay jump down into here just make sure that the Diffie Hellman group matches what we've done previously in the phase 2 element which was 2 and I think it looks great for now so let's hit OK on that ok now once the configuration is in place we can go to the monitor IPsec monitor and you can see at the moment this data is down right click we could bring it up now unfortunately it's not come up in this instance and the reason for that maybe some of you actually noticed is I done the phase one configuration of the Diffie Hellman group incorrect. Now at the beginning I said to you it's very important to make sure that the configuration is identical otherwise the tunnel will not come up. This is an example 90 percent of your troubleshooting is most likely because the tunnel is misconfigured. So if we now go back to the IPsec monitor we can see it's down right click and force it up it connects back into the Cisco. Now we know that the VPN is up on the Fortinet side. Let's look at the interface. You see the interface is now up up, which is great. Now you remember earlier I created a static route. Let's have a look into that a bit more to refresh our memories. And the static route I created was here for the 172.16/24 to tunnel 1. However, if we continue to look at that and ask how would you get to a host inside that subnet it will say it's not in the table even though the interface from layer 1 layer 2's perspective is up up and the reason for that is because of IPs there is no IP on the tunnel interface therefore it's not sure how to route that so there are two ways you can resolve this the recommended way would be to put an IP address on the interface and then normally you have like a slash 30 on the actual tunnel itself alternatively you can use the command IP unnumbered so here I'm actually going to just put a basic IP on the inter on the actual tunnel itself and now if we were to look at the configuration and say to the routine table how would you get to this address it actually populates and says I know how to get there it's through my directly connected tunnel so now we know the Cisco's up and we know the tunnel is up but we have put an IP on the other side it's probably best to put the other side, in this case the 40 gate, with a similar IP. So we'll go into the actual VPN tunnel, and here's the interface that the uh, 40 gate created for us. And we can pop in an IP for ourselves and populate the remote IP. We can also turn on ping to help troubleshoot any issues we may have through that tunnel. Some other things that you need to keep in mind on the FortiGate, it is a firewall, so policies are required. Obviously here, to make things simple, because I'm in a lab, I've just put any any. But you need to make sure you have the correct policies to accommodate the VPN you've got in. So any traffic going in and out of that VPN, treat it like an interface with the correct ingoing and outgoing policies. The other thing we've got to put in consideration is routing. Just like we did on the 
actual Cisco, we need to make sure that the FortiGate knows how to get to the remote subnet that is trying to reach through the VPN and that it has the VPN as the next hop. The last thing for us to do is to confirm connectivity. So we can go back and we can simply ping 172.16.01 and hopefully we get some connectivity, which we do. Hopefully this has been informative and it might help you out of a sticky situation. Either way, thank you for viewing and I hope you enjoyed. Please do like, subscribe and leave a comment.